Hello everyone. As many of you already know, the Tornado Intercepting Toyota was totaled last year and I had to buy a new Chase vehicle. I've been driving after these storms for over 20 years and in this video, I'm going to show you why this vehicle was the most practical choice. And if my word isn't enough for you, we're on our way to see one of the world's most famous auto mechanics for a second opinion. This entire system, the make, the model, and the rigs are based on practicality from an economic perspective, as well as efficiency, safety, and freedom. If we're not throwing away money, then we're free to travel more and see more storms, right? I'm also going to show you my cameras, my computers and rigs, and the logic behind it all. We're here with Scotty Kilmer. Scotty's been a friend of mine for almost 20 years. We used to work together at CBS. I was a camera operator and I, was, I had mixed feelings about doing your TV show. One, it was awesome to get to see you, but on the other end, I had to be up at five o'clock in the morning to shoot it. I wasn't up at five o'clock in the morning. <laughs> so I've known Scotty for a long time and I've gotten a lot of advice from him from YouTube on how to develop a channel. And one of the things that he's always said is you got to be honest and you got to be straight shooters. Yeah, you know, you got to tell people the truth about stuff. Most people can see through the lies after a while. You know, like I've seen car talk guys and years ago they'd say, Oh, if you want to buy synthetic oil, just go to Walmart and buy the cheapest one you can. And then four years later, they're saying, you got to buy this mobile one oil, it's the best. And you know they're getting paid to say it, you know? It's not honest to do stuff like that. So everybody knows that you've done well for yourself. And I remember I asked you one time, why the hell are you still working on cars? Because you wouldn't know what you're talking about if you stopped working on them. There are actually mechanics out there that stop working on cars and they work for companies that real mechanics call them up on the phone and they give advice to show these other guys how to fix the cars. And I always laugh my butt off because, hey, they're not fixing cars anymore and in a few years, they don't know what's actually breaking on cars, so their advice is kind of useless. And anybody who's giving you advice on the internet and they're not actually doing it, hey, their advice is pretty useless too. <laughs> So I can remember when we first started, you got a million views on YouTube, and now you've got half a billion views on YouTube, two million subscribers. My grandfather was a mechanic and I learned from him. My father ran the garage and he always said to my grandfather, Dad, you don't charge people enough money. Well, I'm worse than him. I don't charge people any money at all. I make videos you watch for nothing on YouTube, and then you learn how to fix things. You can't beat that, you know? <laughs> and even though you've done really well for yourself, this is your car. Well, because why should you waste money on a vehicle when the thing works? You know, it's stupid. It's a mode of transportation. It's a 94 Celica. I paid 350 bucks for it like eight years ago. The thing's run forever. How many miles does it have on it? It's got like 240,000 miles on it. Wow just broken in <laughs> so here it is i purchased a used 2015 toyota rav4 one of the things that i went with was two-wheel drive i've been chasing for two decades i've only been stuck twice one of those times a four-wheel drive would not have helped me out what do you think about me driving around in a two-wheel drive vehicle these things are front wheel drive if it was just two wheel drive with the rear wheels yeah it'd be more of a problem a lot of times i'm driving on muddy slippery roads oh slide sliding all over is an all-wheel drive vehicle that much better it is if you're in a maniacal situation like you're going off road in the mud or you know you're climbing up a ski mountain that's got snow up the wazoo with all-wheel drive you get a lot worse gas mods because you're always doing four-wheel drive with all-wheel drive i've also got twice the amount of components, which means more likely things will break down, right? Of course, starters are hard to get to, you need alignments, they're gonna cost more money. And what people don't understand about all-wheel drive is when you buy tires, you gotta buy all four because all the tires have to be the same exact diameter. If they aren't, modern all-wheel drive vehicles, they're computer run. And if one tire is different size than the other, it's gonna keep trying to compensate the drive because it's got the, all the anti-lock brake stuff and the wheel sensors knowing the wheel speed and it'll look like one wheel's going faster than the other and it starts to compensate and it actually burns the inside of the all-wheel drive system out. So it's an expensive thing. When you buy a tire for an all-wheel drive vehicle, you gotta buy all four of them. That would be crazy expensive <laughs> for me because I'm constantly running over nails, yeah. running over screws, oh, yeah. hitting the sticks and cactus. And I mean, when they do break down, 
transfer case goes out, they can be three, four, five thousand dollars repair too. So perhaps there are some occasions where I would say, man, I wish I had all wheel drive, but over the duration, I think I'm probably gonna save more money in the long run with two wheel drive. Sure, I mean, I could say I wish I bought Microsoft stock when they came out, you know, but I don't have a time machine, so that's not gonna happen. <laughs> the big trucks might be good for a local or somebody, but for me, it would be completely impractical. If I can get it done with a fuel efficient car, then that's a good thing. And also I do like the idea of a smaller carbon footprint, whatever I can. However, you can't get too small. The 30 mile an hour winds <laughs> are practically blowing you off the highway. So this is kind of a good middle ground for that. What do you say we go get a Bon Me? Well, you've always had Toyotas. You had your old Forerunner for ages, and then you had uh, Camry, and yeah. then you got a Rev 4. Yeah. yeah, and you worked on them. Of course, all you yeah. ever did on them was the brakes and the starter, the alternator, I think, once. But both of those cars had 200,000 plus miles on them before I got rid of them. I think if you're a storm chaser, this isn't the most exciting car, but it's a Toyota. It's reliable. One thing that people don't realize about storm chasing is that 99% of it is hard hauling ass on paved roads. Yeah, trying to get some. And crosswinds with rain all over. So a low profile car is actually really safe. I actually love storm chasing in a car. And that last car I had, the Toyota Camry, it had a pretty high clearance yeah. for a car. It was huge and it got pretty good gas mileage but I didn't go with the Camry this time because they got lower to the ground, they got smaller, uh, I needed something a little bigger. So I went with a RAV4 this time. Well, it's based on the Camry chassis anyways. <laughs> right, right. So for those of you that don't know what a banh mi is, it's a Vietnamese sandwich. Why do these sandwiches taste so damn good? Monosodium glutamate. A lot of guys really like gadgets and they like to talk oh, yeah. about gadgets, sure. but you don't need it. So this is built on simplicity. I used to have a computer here and I'd turn my head and be doing that and you can't do that while driving. No. The logic behind my setup is simplicity and safety. To have all my gadgets as high as possible without blocking my view. If I glance at this screen or that one, I can still see the car in front of me. There's a reason why your gas gauge and speedometer are engineered here and not over here. In the passenger seat and on the floor, I have my camera cases. I can grab and put back whichever camera I need and mount it without having to look. I'm still using Sony mirrorless cameras. This Sony A7S II is my primary video camera with its internal 4K and amazing low light sensitivity. And this A7R2 is my backup for video and primary camera for stills with its 42.4 megapixel files. They both shoot internal 4K, but they're difficult to focus on clouds, and I'm still wrestling with that a little bit. This Black Magic Design camera has a 4K global shutter. I use this for lightning. My iPhone usually has radar on it, split with reflectivity and base velocity, and I can use it for a vlogging camera in action if I need to. On the tablet, I have Google Maps semi-wide. Underneath, I have an old GPS zoomed in tight to see exactly when my next road is coming up. That way, I don't have to keep zooming in and out on one device. I also like to use paper maps that click right on my steering wheel. If you look, you can see all my markings and escape routes and plans that I've used in the past. I also have a couple suction cups and action cameras on standby. However, with my new Blackview dash cams, I'm not sure how much I'll be using them. And the other thing about it is it breaks down real easy. So when we go to get Bon Me in downtown Houston, I can pull all this out in two minutes. Why make something complicated if you don't have to? Yeah, because simplicity can be boring to people. That's why they want Mercedes Benzes and stuff. <laughs> yeah, well, when they break, they'd wish they had some plus. Exactly. You know? And also, these these Toyos are pretty affordable. You know, I got this one used for fourteen thousand five hundred. I don't want to go buy a, a brand started, new Raptor, man. and you know, at the end of four years, they're both going to be a pile of rubble. Except for mm -hmm. I only spent fourteen thousand dollars on this one. Yeah, instead of forty five thousand. Exactly. See, that's why I get along with this guy. <laughs> Let's go get a sandwich. What do you okay. say? Thank you. Did you get bubble tea? Yeah, I like bubble tea. <laughs> oh yeah, get that sriracha. Here's what happened while we were gone. Don't touch anything. Don't touch anything. 
Poor dude. <laughs> There's pollen everywhere. Yeah, my girlfriend's allergic to March in Houston. Yeah, so is my wife. I called her my girlfriend. She's been my wife for five yeah. years. <laughs> still, it's still weird to say I have a wife. <laughs> How long you been married? 40 years. 40 years. <laughs> My wife was in a hit and run um, in a parking lot. We got him. And then I was in a hit and run. We didn't get him. So I got these cameras from Blackview. This one shoots 4K constantly for a day. And then it starts to recycle. So if anybody smashes me, I've got them. And then out the back, I've got another camera shooting 1080p, but at 60 frames per second. These dudes in Austin at a place called the Dash Cam Store totally hooked me up and installed them. All right, so, what, what do we got here? All right, we got the 750S, which is gonna be 1080p at 60 frames a second. Sweet. This is the 4K. Sweet. The 750S is gonna go in the back so we can catch some cool storms with a nice buttery footage. And then the 4K, nice and tight, clean resolution is gonna go in the front, right? Right? Right. <laughs> <laughs> the things will run while it's parked if somebody does hit you or something happens in front of your vehicle while you're not there, it'll catch it, it'll pick it up. What do you think of that? Perfect. Yeah. Two 128 gig cards, so you have top max storage. It'll look like a factory install, so you're all good, right? right. <laughs> so this year should be interesting. If anything crazy happens in front or behind my car during the chase or during the commutes, I'll have captured it. The only problem with it is if I ever get lofted into a field by a tornado and that's how I go, my family's probably gonna have to see that viral video <laughs> of my last words. What do you care, you'll be dead. Yeah, right. <laughs> I don't want my mom go. to see it. Would y'all young folks mind supporting our home today? Anything's possible. Oh, all I got is a credit card, I'm sorry. Yeah, we're credit card people. Do you take stolen credit cards? No, if they're not <laughs> stolen, we can't take them. Oh, okay. Yeah, but if they weren't stolen, then you could have gave them to me and wrote the number down, okay? All because right. Thank you. Brother. Thank you so much. Right. Is there anything wrong with these RAV4s? Something that they're cutting corners on that maybe I need to keep an eye on? Well, I'm not a fan of those CVT transmissions. If you get one, my, my advice is you get a standard transmission or get a regular automatic transmission. Does this one have a CVT transmission? I don't know. Oh. You just got it. Oh. <laughs> Let me look. Yes, it does. <laughs> so uh, keep your fingers crossed. <laughs> okay. Well, my son has a RAV4 with a CV2 transmission. They love it. They haven't had any problems with it. And theirs is all-wheel drive. Are they making the Toyotas nowadays as good as they did 10, 20 years ago? No, but nobody is. They're still the best car out there for the money, but they're all cutting corners nowadays when they're building cars. There's no if, ands, or buts. With all of these decisions and factors, I think I got the most practical storm chase vehicle that I could right now, as far as making money, as far as getting the most out of it. My last two Toyotas, I felt like I got two cars for the price of the one. Hopefully I'll get the same with out of this one. Hey, well, you should if you take care of it, as long as all those drunks and crackheads don't run into you. <laughs> Man, thank you so much again okay. for everything, and uh, we'll see you soon. Okay, I'm not going anywhere. You are. <laughs>